So I grabbed a 37 centimeter bowl, I traced around the outside of that, cut it out, I folded it into four to find the absolute center point. At that center point I placed a 7 centimeter diameter cup, folded it back into four and as you can see I cut that 7 centimeter diameter um, circle out. So that essentially is a flounce. Now to cut out a flounce you need an entrance point. So I just cut down one of those four lines and decided to trace my one centimeter seam allowance. So the one centimeter that I'm tracing there will be the edge that we stitch to the hem of our pencil skirt. So to figure out how many of these flounces I need to cut out, which it turned out to be three, I have to measure my stitch line, which I've just shown you how to do there, which was 36 centimeters. So we then want to run back to our pattern and measure our defined and definite hem width. So mine was 92 centimeters in the end. Uh, so yeah, that means I need to cut out three of those flounces. I'll have quite a bit left over, but I needed a minimum of three. So place your flounce pattern down onto your fabric, pin it down nice and securely and cut around the outside, cut down through that line we created and then cut out that seven centimeter diameter circle from the center. And that is what our finished flounces will eventually look like when they're finally attached. So now we move on to the darts. Now you wanna make sure that the bad side of the fabric is facing up and that all your pins are going through the fabric that way. You don't wanna stitch the darts um, on the outside, the good side of the fabric. So basically I just grab those, grab and line up those two little notches at the very top of the pattern, pin through that and then work down towards the last marking that we made where we want the dart to finish. This will make a little bit more sense when we hop over to the sewing machine but right now that's what your darts should roughly look like and then I obviously throw a pin in the center of the dart just to help stabilize it but yeah. That's how you pin those darts. And then we're gonna pin the center back, get that ready for being stitched. And yeah, pin the darts in for the center back as well. I always start stitching my darts at the broadest point, which is generally the top of the dart anyway. So on about a 2.5 to three centimeter stitch length, we just wanna back stitch and gradually work our way down and out to nothing to that bottom marking that we made. Make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and, and at the end of every dart as well. Uh, here I am stitching up our center back seam. I started at the hem and I worked my way up to that notch that we made where the bottom of the zip will sit. And this is just an overview of what the skirt should look like at this stage with the darts stitched in. So placing our fabric pattern good side to good side, we want to pin our side seams together. Then run over to our sewing machine and using my foot, I always use my foot and the base of the sewing machine as a guide, stitch a centimeter in. Our next step is to pin and stitch our flounces together. So I cut this pattern out together, the fabric's still laying good side to good side. So I'm just gonna throw three pins in to hold that edge together, open it back out, and then lay our third and final flounce uh, to one other side. Now make sure when you're pinning this that you haven't pinned like good side to wrong side. Often with flounces, because they're so full, you'll accidentally do that and you'll have like a seam facing outways. So just take your time when you're pinning your flounce together and then hop on the sewing machine and stitch that, uh, stitch that together. Don't forget to back stitch again at the front and the end. This is just me showing you here that I have overlocked the side seams and the center back open. Uh, if you don't have an overlocker, and yeah, and obviously the flounce seam as well. If you don't have an overlocker though, you can always zigzag any raw edges and that will stop it from fraying. Now what I'm doing here is identifying the center front down at the hem. I probably should have put a notch in here, but I didn't do it, so I'm just lining up the side seams together and finding that center front and popping a pin in and I did the exact same with the flounce lined up the two side seams and folded it in half and found the center front uh, we just want to make sure that everything's even I didn't want to pin from one edge right the way around because then I'd have like a random seam somewhere for the flounce 
Uh, so yeah, we just want those flounce seams to be evenly on either side. So this is what our skirt should look like with the flounce just loosely pinned to it. The last thing we have to do is our flounce center back seam. So I just line that up and put a pin through so it fits with the center back of the skirt, just really loosely. I just sort of guesstimate it and then pin and stitch that center back seam down. Just be careful when you're sewing it to not catch the center back seam of our already stitched skirt. So once once I've gone ahead and done that, uh, I'm basically just going to attach the flounce uh, to our skirt. I should also point out at this stage with uh, my seam splitting, at the centre back I always make sure that my seam allowance is sitting open and flat, but when it comes to my side seams I push the seam allowance so it's facing towards our centre back seam. That's not a rule, that's just what I like to do. Uh, and then I went and hopped on my overlocker and overlocked that hem and also the seam we just created where the flounce meets the skirt. Next we want to stitch in our zip. Now this is a bit of a tricky way of putting in a zip. It's definitely not for beginners but for those of you out there who have put in a zip before and are interested this is a new way of doing it. Uh, I measure in two centimeters either side and put a pin in. I then with one side it doesn't matter which on this skirt I've done the left hand side I fold the fabric over and I place a pin holding the zip the, the head of the zip in. Now I've just put the zip in about a centimeter down from the top uh, I would advise you to do the same just so it does up properly uh, and meets with our bias binding. I then go back and throw a couple of pins in on that folded edge of fabric just to keep it all neat and straight and then I lay the pin underneath so that the teeth are hidden. So this side that we're pinning down now is kind of like a little sheath. It hides, it hides both sides of the uh, teeth of the zipper. I then open up the zip and from the inside I pin from the bottom all the way back up to the top but as you can see I've opened the fabric out and I'm going to stitch the zip from the inside so one side is stitched from the inside and the other side is top stitched from the outside make sure you remember to change over your regular foot for a zipper foot at this stage and don't forget to move the needle over I decided to start stitching on the right hand side from the inside uh, so I back stitched at the beginning came down really nice and snug towards that edge of the uh, zipper teeth and then I swapped over to the outside and top stitched along the left hand side yeah it was the left hand side um, but yeah as you can see I am quite far away from the edge because we've pulled that top edge over to cover the zip as you can see here um, once it's ironed it sits really nice and flush and covers the zip really nicely so our next step and I think it's our almost our final step is to fix our waistband so I wanted a really small and clean waistband so I went for bias binding I didn't have cream so I just used white so Opening up our bias binding, leaving about two centimeters over the edge where the zip starts. Make sure that our stitch line is above uh, that little metal um, teeth stopper. If you stitch below that, uh, it's just going to create a lot of bulk um, when it comes to finishing the edge there. So make sure you pin the bias bias binding waistband above that teeth edge um, where the zipper juts up and ends and I guess the other important thing that you need to know is to make sure that you keep that line a centimeter down we've only allocated for a centimeter of seam allowance at our waist so we don't want to go over that and lastly to make sure that all of your darts and seams are facing towards the center back so I've pinned right the way around a centimeter down and now I'm just yeah marking where the edge of that um, where the end of the zipper sits so I don't pin below that and yeah I've pinned that in place and now we're going to hop on our sewing machine and stitch in that little groove exactly where I've put the pins. Whenever I'm stitching with a really sturdy and thick fabric, especially when it comes to a zipper finishing, I sometimes like to stitch with glasses or sunglasses on, just in case if the needle does break, that way you won't get any splinters of metal needle in your eyeball. So that is what the seam looks like at the very top. Once it's been stitched in place, you then want to come back and trim away all of your excess seam allowance at the top. So trim it down to about 0.5 centimeter, just in line with the top. Um, of that bias binding that we stitched down. Now we want to carefully and very slowly because I have pinned my fingers like pinned through the garment and pinned like pinned through to my finger so many times doing this 
it really hurts. So yeah, take your time when you're pinning the waistband down. So I do this from the inside of the garment and I just completely fold over that one centimeter uh, bias binding and throw some pins in from the inside. It's also nice to pin out a little triangle edge, which I just did before when it comes to the beginning and the end. This just means that um, the bias binding isn't going to be in the way of the zipper head, as you can see me doing there. I've just folded out a little triangle. And then of course you want to hop on your machine and stitch it. Now sometimes it's easier because there's so much bulk at the head right here because I, I stitched with wool. Um, it might be easier to do it with a zipper foot but I left on my, um, my regular foot. But yes, top stitch that down and in place and that is the end of our waistband. So we now just need to stitch our hem in place. So I've just got my regular foot back on and I'm just by freehand. I'm not going to put any pins in. I'm just going to start at the center back and yeah, fold the fabric up by about a centimeter to 0.5 millimeters and just top stitch that in place. The absolute last thing you guys will want to do is give the entire skirt a press. This is just an overview, um, but go ahead and give it a press. But uh, once you've done that, once you've pressed the hem and the waistband, that is it. You guys are finished. guys I hope you enjoyed give it a thumbs up if you did because it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside and if you haven't subscribed already I am planning on doing more tutorials on this channel as time permits um, leave a comment down below letting me know if you liked it um, yeah if there's any other tutorials you guys would be interested in seeing or trends that you like um, I can always take that feedback on board and yeah add it to my list of things that I want to film um yeah I haven't been around for a little while because uh, I was on a holiday but I'm back now and I have been working my tushy off at a bunch of different jobs and in the studio um it's a little plug for myself but it's right at the end so there's probably only four of you watching but for those four that are um I have an online shop and I've recently just started stocking it with stuff that I've been making uh if you follow my Instagram you already know but yeah I'll leave a link to that a shameless link either on screen or in the down bar so if you're interested in seeing some of the stuff that you can actually buy um then yeah there's also that um you guys are awesome. I hope I get more than 100 views on this because I've been away for so long. But you guys still keep subscribing, so that's awesome. And I'm so happy that you do. Um, I hope everyone's happy and well. Uh, have a chat with me in the comments down below. If you want to say hi and haven't before, I would love to have a chat. So, yes, I'm going to stop saying so and I'm going to go. But, and that rhymed. I'm just going to be quiet now. Um, I hope you guys are happy and well, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.